Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be working on setting up our game over state for our 2D platformer here. So the way the game over state is gonna work is pretty much whenever our player gets hit by an enemy or if they fall off the edge and down below our level, they are going to basically reset. Okay, the level is gonna restart and the player will spawn back up here. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, let's go over and open up our player controller script right here. Now, inside of the player controller script, we are going to go down and create a brand new function. And this function is going to be a public void called game over. Okay, like so. Now, the reason we are making this function a public function is because we need to be able to call this from outside of the script. Okay, for example, our enemy script here is going to be able to call that function. So in order to do that, we need to make it public. Now, inside of this function, what we are going to do is basically reload our current scene. So in order to do that, we first of all need to tell this script that we want to be able to access Unity's scene manager. And to do that, we need to go to the top and you'll see here we have these three lines of code, okay? They're basically using, and then we have a, um, a library here. Now, the way code and C Sharp especially works is that you don't have everything at your disposal right at the start, okay? So for certain things, you may need to access a library. Um, in our case, we are accessing the Unity Engine Library, which allows us to access things such as mono behavior, rigid body, sprite renderer, the fixed update function, the update function, okay? These are all things that are built into the Unity Engine itself. Now, the Unity Engine doesn't always give us everything we need since there are a lot of different uh, code libraries that we can access. So if we want to get specific, we do need to actually add them here. So for example, in order to access our scene manager, we need to be using the scene management library. Now to do that, we can go to a new line here and just go using unity engine dot scene management like so. And now we have access to our scene manager. So let's go back down to our game over function. And inside of here, what we are going to do is go scene manager dot load scene, okay? And this function right here, basically we need to give it either a scene name, so we can just go level one like so, which is the name of our scene, or we can give it a build index. And our build index for level one is zero, okay? Basically the levels go zero, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. Um, but what if we're on level five, for example, okay? We don't wanna have to hard code every single level we have. so. Instead, what we can do is we can just get whatever our current scene is and reload that. So to do this, uh, I'm gonna go scene manager dot get active scene. Now this is a function call, so make sure to add the two empty brackets like so, and then dot build index. So this here is basically getting the index for the current scene and loading that, okay? So this line of code essentially reloads our current scene. So we have our game over function, but at the moment it's not hooked up to anything just yet. So if we were to play our game, nothing would happen. So in order to make something happen, we're first of all gonna make it so that if our player is jumping along the level here and they fall off the platform, we don't want them to keep on falling down forever, okay? Uh, let's say once they reach below, uh, we'll say below negative four, okay? Once they go below negative four on the Y axis, that is when we will basically call the game over function. So to do this, we're gonna go up to our update function right here. And as a bit of a challenge, I want you to have a go at implementing this, okay? Uh, here's a hint, basically we are gonna have an if statement that checks to see if our Y position is below negative three or negative four, I'm pretty sure we said. And if that's the case, call the game of a function. So have a go at that and I'll be right back to see how you done. Okay, so I hope you had a go at that challenge. Pretty much what we want to do is inside of our player controller's update function, we want to check every single frame if our player's Y position is below a certain number. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new if statement here. We're gonna go if transform.position.y is less than, let's just say negative four, then what we are going to do is we are going to call the game over function, like so, okay? 
So that is what we need to do here. And make sure it is inside of the update function since we do want to check this every single frame. So we can save that. We can then go back inside of Unity now. And if we press play, we should be able to test this out. So let us go over to the side right here and jump off the edge. And as you can see, once we go below negative four, our player, our scene basically gets reset. So we are back at the start. And there we go. Now, one more thing, and that is our enemy. As you can see right now, our enemy is just passing directly through us. So we need a way of making it so that when the enemy hits us, the game over function gets called. So how do we do that? Well, let us go over to our enemy script right here. And inside of the enemy script, we need to create ourselves a brand new function. Now, this is going to be the on trigger enter 2D function. So we're going to go void on trigger enter 2D. Now, on trigger enter works very similar to on collision enter, yet they both differ in a certain way. A collision is basically a solid hit. So you can think of um, when our player lands on the ground, their feet are being planted on the ground's collider, whereas a trigger is passing through something, okay? So maybe you might want to have some sort of trigger when a player walks through a door, that would be a trigger, okay? The player isn't blocked, they can pass through it, yet we can detect when uh, that pass through happens, and that is what a trigger is. So what we need to do is we basically need to make it so that when the player is hit by the enemy, we call their game over function. But how do we do that? Well, we've got the function here that detects when a trigger has happened, but how do we know if it was a player or not? How do we know that what the enemy hit is a player and not a wall or a coin or another enemy? Well, the way we can do this is by checking to see what the player's tag is. And before we continue writing code, let's go back inside of Unity and we need to give our player a tag. So I'm gonna select our player here. And if we go over to the inspector, you'll see underneath their name, they have this little tag drop down. Now tag is basically a label that we can attach to a game object. So I'm gonna click on where it says untagged and you'll see there are a few preset ones here. We can click add tag to add a new one, but we've got player. So I'm just gonna select that. And now our player game object is tagged as player. And you can of course create tags for other things as well if that's needed, uh, but we're just gonna tag our player for now. So back inside of our script, what we're gonna do is we are going to check to see if the collision dot compare tag is player. So the parameter here is collision. This is basically going to be our player's collider when the enemy hits us. And we are checking to see if that game object's tag is player. And if so, then the condition is true and we can call the game over function. Now, in order to call the player's game over function, we need to access their player controller component. So to access another game object's component um, or get any component in general, we need to do a certain function call. So I'm gonna go collision.getComponent. And then inside of these two angled brackets, we need to define the type of component we are searching for, which is gonna be player controller. And then two empty brackets like so. And then we can go dot game over. Oops, not game object, game over like so. So basically what we have done here is we have accessed the collision component that we have hit. Um, in this case, it will be the player um, after we do this if statement. Then we are getting another component on that game object. We are searching for the player controller and then we are calling the game over function on the player controller. So we can save that, go back inside of Unity and let's test it out to see if it works. So I'm going to press play right here. And if we jump up into our enemy, we should see that when it hits us, the scene gets reset and we can even jump into the enemy here to make sure it works. There we go. So we're able to reset the scene by having our enemy run into us. So we need to avoid them on this jump here. And if we jump off our level and fall down below, that will also reset the level as well. So yeah, that is a look at our game over state inside of Unity. Now in the next lesson, we are gonna be looking at setting up our coins, okay? These are basically going to be the collectibles that our player will collect and that will increase their score over time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all then in the next lesson.